welcome to the roast of Xander the Blue! Yeah, yeah! We have a wonderful panel with us uh, this evening on this dais. And uh, but first, we have a special message and a special announcement from AV. Ladies and gentlemen, both and neither, please feel free to stand, sit, kneel, or do a ceremonial dance as we perform the Roasting National Anthem. <laughs> Acapella. <laughs> oh, Xander the Blue, he's a gay dragon, roar, being roasted tonight. By some people he calls friends. His boyfriend, Alkali, is the loudest of all. Should he whisper too loud, the whole hotel just might fall. And Pendez isn't there. His voice booms through the air. Even though he's at home wearing no underwear. Oh, hey, that's not cream cheese on the bagel's boozy gave you. In Milwaukee, you might freeze. So start the both and neither, how can this be a true sporting event without also doing the Canadian National Anthem? Oh, oh, oh. <clears throat> oh hey, for squared, it's time for Xander's roast. I am not there, so let me list your hosts. Chris Comedy Bun, Greg Orenfer, Boozy and QM, all making fun of each other, then Xander gets revenge. <laughs> now I introduce Roastmaster Iggy. Yeah! Hey there, first square, they will now roast. For thee, hey there, for square, they will now roast for thee. Thank you very much, Pandas, for making that possible. Now that the, all of the panelists here are stunned, um, this roast is also a remembrance of beard number two. <laughs> so, we don't got all night, Dragon. You can't laugh this hard on the first joke. Shut up! All right. So we're here tonight to roast to roast Xander. And just a few jokes before I bring up our first guest. Xander is so gay that his own, that he has his own line of CBD Skittles. <laughs> You may have heard that Xander was going to be featured in a remake of a Disney classic, Lion King 2, Xander's Pride, but it was canceled when the test audiences learned that he had none left. Ron Jeremy also sends his regards. The only thing cheesier than his hands in a canister of cheese balls is you balls deep in an orgy. Oh! Wow. You know, I remember last year, Casino Con, it was wonderful. Uh, and Xander, of course, played Elvis. What a very fitting character for Xander. Because since, just like Elvis, Xander enjoys a nice, meaty banana dipped in peanut butter and bacon. And Xander is quite the visionary. Every morning, finds himself stuck in a closet. So before I get too deeply in this, I'm going to go to someone that I have no notes for. Nice notes, anyways. <laughs> Dragor. 
Hey! We were gonna call this a spit roast. But Xander's on a diet and Dragger won't eat red meat unless he's sick. Not sick sick, because he's always coughing. I mean sick like deranged. Uh, I guess he's like that all the time, never mind. Yo! Dragger was interviewed on the radio, if you didn't hear it locally, um, for this con and for the fandom. Yeah. It was quite ironic, since he was talking about ham furs on it, and he's basically the biggest ham I know. Aw, thank you! You're welcome. I got five more, buddy. Dragger and I tried to play League of Legends together. But well, we got banned because all we did was curl up and turtle in the base while hissing at all the other players in the game. Dragger doesn't own a snake. It's cute. It's as cold-blooded as he is. Dragger has been writing uh, so much for this that he that uh, he shed like a snake does. Oh wait, uh, I got something on this sheet. Uh, he's lived in a shed since the last roast. Snakes like him do both anyway, so whatever. Dragor only sprints for billable hours. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was actually uh, gaming that reaction because I figured Dragger would laugh at it and a few others, of course, because they're all programmers. So we're just going to get rid of all the programmer jokes right now. Um, no one's going to give them anyway. So we're just going to call you a nerd and invite you to Ruby Tuesday Nightly Build Steakhouse where the cows are constantly being compiled. Oh my god. No, the, the, if you don't know, the nerd density in that. <laughs> Are you calling me dense? Yes. Your density is lower. Oh! Oh! That's, that's nerd. Come on! Come on! It's, it's such a dirty joke. I mean, let, let's just get the dirty jokes out of the way. Dragger is so short that he cannot grow five o'clock shadow. And just to make sure that you aren't the only one loved on this panel so much, that's one thing I should note. Everyone on stage agreed to be, to be on this. It's a wonderful time. Well, you didn't. <laughs> but we all came here to be ribbed and have a wonderful time. Feel free to laugh at all of these jokes and what any, anyone here is on the stage is going to say. And just to kind of share the love. Behind every smart fur is a smarter one. Behind Dragor is about half as much as anyone else on this panel besides QM. <laughs> You are the life of any party. Last time you walked into one of my parties, you know what you said? Let's write limericks. <laughs> With that, I'd like to bring up Dragger, one of my close friends, chair of this con. Please give a warm round of applause for Dragger, everyone. The, uh, the amount of uh, writing and preparation I have done for this may have been grossly overstated. <laughs> so, uh, let's do it. Here we go. Here we are at the roast tonight. I have no set filled with fright. With time running out, a limerick I'll shout. Everyone knows rhyming is tight. <laughs> Xander, Fur, Chris, Iggy, Alkali, QM, Pandez, and Boozy. Up here we'll trade quips and barbs, and after, don't you worry, we'll drink carbs to complete a night full of revelry. <laughs> Heavy is the head that wears the crown, er, hat. I wanted to write more, something funny about that. Turns out the weight came from all the dough. The change, I mean, 50 pounds or so. Now I don't need the gym, my neck is stacked. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one of these silly things that I got. To my best friend Xander the Blue, you're wickedly brilliant, I love you. We're at the end of my abridged piece, thank you all for hearing my speech. And last but not least, the dais, fuck you. <laughs> Really? That was great. <laughs> Honest to God, I didn't know you were going to come up here with a limerick. <laughs> That's how well I know him. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dragor. Uh, so back to Xander. You know, so we talked about you know Xander being this wonderful visionary. Pandas even turned it into a song. You know about the Dragon household. They, they went over one of those old classic songs. I can see it now, Xander singing. Clown shoes to the left of me, Alkali. Mice to the right, you know, Miko. Here I am stuck in the closet again. <laughs> Xander is so blind that one time he got lost at the mall and wound up needing to be rescued from Pottery Barn. He was found trying to blow uh, Feng Shui's uh, wild wicker basket joint 
An employee told him, that's not a dude. He replied, well, damn sure ain't a woman. <laughs> Oh, Speaking of happy accidents, fur. Where is fur? Black fur. Well, welcome, welcome. We mistakenly actually invited fur at Xander's request. How were we to know that someone feeling the burn didn't mean fur? <laughs> Fur's original name, come on, Fur's original name was Stitches. Aww. Aww. I mean, come on. Fur has now had more surgeries than Joan Rivers. <laughs> <laughs> Fittingly, Fur's mouth is also bigger than Joan Rivers. Wow. <laughs> I am, I'm owning that one. <laughs> Ever wonder what it's like to be, uh, what it would be like if we had bizarro fur? I don't. <laughs> we love fur just the way they are. Who else is mentioned by name on the insurance paperwork for this con 17 times? Five of which read, fur is a danger to themselves in a good way. <laughs> that's also, that's very similar to how dating apps refer to fur as well. They're outgoing in a good way. <laughs> So I, I can't thank Pandas enough for sending us that little singing telegram. I uh, can't thank him enough. I requested that he not send the roses, though. I had to turn those down because you know what happened last time? We spent the rest of the night pulling thorns out of furs, lifeless, to battered and deflated ego. <laughs> you may have heard Fur had a little electrical mishap on the way to the con. Assembling those badges. Thank you very much for those that did that. Don't mix up your soldering iron with your vibrator on blindfold night. <laughs> I've seen fur be a lot of different things, a fur truck, fur hydrant, but I've never known fur to have any friends. <laughs> so with that, I, I do have to say that fur is an incredible um, fur. It never ceases to amaze me how, how we always have a cool project or some idea up your sleeve, and it's wonderful to see your passion at the display on here in the fandom. Uh, please, everyone, welcome Fur up on to the podium. Please give a round of applause. <laughs> the furry fandom. <laughs> So I've been a furry for at least like 12 years now, and I want to say it is one of the most diverse and one of the most crazy fandoms in the world. You find people from every walk of life, from the person who um, is a college student to a nuclear engineer to someone who knows basically nothing to um, to uh, some of the some of the most interesting people I've ever met in my life. Uh, in fact, the furry fandom is such a weird mix of people. You have so many people coming from different backgrounds, races, uh, gender identities, um, places, of, uh, places of religion, places of uh, region. It is insane. It is absolutely stunning that you get nothing but nine fucking white people on this stage year after year! <laughs> in the fandom is when on this stage, not even just this roast, but every single main stage panel is the same combination of these fucking people year after fucking year! should be getting back to roasting the people on this stage. Alkali! Gosh. At the IFC roast, you said I spent too much time on you. Boozy Badger! <laughs> Boozy Badger, you're still here? 
here? I thought you milked this furry thing and left for the Bronies two years ago! <laughs> Boozy, honestly, how does it feel spending years curating your Lawyers and Liquors blog, spending so much time making meticulous post after post, doing your research, and then blowing up a thousandfold just by tweeting about some goddamn furry legal bullshit? How do you know that your legacy now is you playing video games? You spent so many years studying the law, and look where he is now! People, you too can fall that deep! Don't you worry! <laughs> Iggy, have you found a house yet? Oh my god, you shaved! He's not homeless anymore! Everyone, please! Oh my god, I'm so proud of you! He's wearing clothes that don't have holes in them! <laughs> Believe it or not, Iggy makes the most out of any of us right now. It's fucking crazy that he looks like that. You know, um... <laughs> Richest thing, you don't have to stay at the rags. <laughs> uh, dragger. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you completely unabashedly the last ten messages I've had for with Dragger. No. <laughs> Right after MFF. Hey, Dragger, it was nice seeing you, comma. Let me know when you want to talk about those PCD badges. <laughs> <laughs> January 15th. <laughs> hey, that's a cool idea. January 15th, six minutes later. Awesome, just let me know if you want to go ahead. January 17th, hey. January 18th, a sticker of a roadie horse going, Ooh. <laughs> Last Monday, hey, let's do that after all. You can get those pretty quick, right? Question mark. <laughs> Oh, Chris the Comedy Bunny. Everyone, please get it up for this year's diversity hire. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Chris, there's not much... Yes. There's not too much I can say about you, because honestly, there's not much to you. That's bad. <laughs> No, honestly, I really can't say that. Chris, you are one of the most talented individuals. You have spent so much time, so much energy creating content, creating videos that are absolutely wonderful, inspiring, and honestly, completely deep, motivating, and really wonderful, and insanely funny. And you get seven retweets. No, oh, it's great. <laughs> How does it feel that you get one tenth of the action of a random fursuiter with their knees on a bed looking back at the camera and patting their legs? <laughs> I mean, I get it. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> so I have one last page. Hey, you guys, can you do me a favor and put a picture of pandas on? I know I'm not supposed to roast people that aren't here, but fuck them. <laughs> I'll allow it. <laughs> Pandas, you piece of shit. You had to go and leave us. I had so much material on you, you jackass. I was going to talk about how you lost so much weight. How wonderful it is that you are being more creative. You're coming into your own. But no, you had to go get a job and leave us. You had to go to your real place of employment because you're there because money is so much better than us. You know what? Money sucks. Fuck capitalism. Fuck it. Burn it. because they didn't actually tell me how long I'm supposed to go. But Xander! <laughs> yeah. Eh. Every year. Every year.
ladies and gentlemen, for... Wow. That was a lot of energy. You just spent like all the energy in the room in about five. You know we got a while to go yet. So, Xander's persona is the only one where adding googly eyes would add visibility. Did you hear? Did you hear? Uh, Xander starting his own diet program. I'll start again. Sorry. Xander starting his own diet program and exercise. He did like that DDP yoga and all that stuff going on. Except his consists of a neutro system. Neutro system uh, includes a free package of nuts, an audio greeting card of him screaming "Oh yeah!" along with the other half of partially eaten Slim Jim and a single Krogerito. <laughs> I know you don't eat name brand Doritos. You just you, like you go to Costco and get like. <laughs> Xander loves movies in the Oscars. In fact, he's our fandom's Alec Baldwin, right? They're both well known for their not slanding their cars in a lake. <laughs> <laughs> that brings me to Chris. <laughs> we have the wonderful and always fun a Chris the Comedy Bunny with us. Really, we didn't have the budget to hire uh, Parappa the Rapper, and Chris works for Orange Fago and used high school used brown paper lunch bags. I have been craving Fago all day. Can I have my per diem? <laughs> I mean, I, I know I know how hard it is to be an aspiring, you know actor, voice actor, mascot, that kind of thing. You try to get a job as a mascot at a pizzeria. But the Noi did better with test audiences. <laughs> Chris was an extra in the 80s movie Rad, if you didn't know, and kind of suffered a similar fate as the characters in that, you know, sacrificing a solid future in mainstream media to win a tricycle race. <laughs> the trophy was big. Yeah. Well, if you haven't seen Rad, which you should, you should. but... <laughs> I knew you'd know what that is. Yeah. If you didn't, I got, I got another allegory for you. Which isn't really an allegory, but it works. Uh, let me put it this way. Since it's a furry con. Chris reminds me of an alpaca. Slightly better than a llama. Capable of a spit take, but not mainstream enough to be relevant beyond Peru. <laughs> This is how we get such great cultural analysis of Dora the Explorer travels to the gathering of the Doug Juggalos. <laughs> Speaking of the Oscars, you know, all that movie stuff and the Oscars. And, you know, Chris is our fandom's Eminem. There's only one. They have a color for all, outer shell, and they're full of nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Chris got a job. <laughs> you go okay over there? I heard an audible, whoa. <laughs> and it got me. <laughs> Chris got a job as a voice actor on Sesame Street. As Oscar's garbage can. <laughs> Chris created their own art site with before and after shots of famous murders of puppets. <laughs> Who can forget the time King Friday the 13th came home to see Saturday and Tuesday having a Saturnalia night? Oh. Oh. That's good. If that was too highbrow, Chris likes to carry their memories of good pastimes with them. That's why their necklace is the UPN logo. <laughs> another furry friend of ours into wrestling. They, you remember how back in the day you had like, the creator wrestler programming games like WWF No Mercy and 64? Ding, ding, they, they should pay us for that. <laughs> uh, but, you know, their character's special move in that game? Syndication. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. There's, UA, there's VHF, UHF, and oh, Bun had a hair too much grass. Wake me up after Rocket Power. <laughs>
Chris, the puppet stuff, the comedy, the, the cultural stuff that you do, we've shared the stage in so many fun ways that I never thought I would imagine. You are absolutely awesome. It's a pleasure to have met you in the past few years and perform with you, and I can't wait to always see what it is you're going to come up with. Please welcome up, uh, up to the podium, Chris the Comedy Bunny. Oh, yeah, that's what's up. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> It's been really wonderful getting to know all these people on stage in the last few years. I'm kind of the new person to this little gathering of white people. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what's really interesting is, uh, do you guys know what myself, Iggy, Dragor, and Fur all have in common? The three of them know, and that's the best part. <laughs> Think. Oh! Yeah! Yeah! Oh my. What up? Fuck you! Ha ha ha! This is not how comedy works. <laughs> it is for us. Oh, okay. Iggy, it's really fitting that they chose you to be the roast master because holy shit, can you talk? <laughs> I, I love Iggy to death, but my god, if this guy corners you at a party, it turns into this four minute dissertation on how cricket works. <laughs> and then you start zoning out because you're only human. And then you kind of phase back in ten minutes later and he's talking about naval ship tactics. And then your ass has to play Nancy Drew to figure out however, how any of those two dots could ever connect before he hard lefts into Star, or Star Trek history. I can confirm this. <laughs> You recently had your jaw replaced, right? A little bit. Like with part cow? Yeah. Right? For you're kind of like that one member of the Star Trek, like at a Star Trek convention, collecting people's hair. Just a little too into it, right? <laughs> you went farther than everyone else and were like, Jesus, dude. Like, I want to be an animal, but damn. <laughs> Seriously, Fur was telling me about his surgery, and he had to get multiple teeth removed just to get this chunk of cow jaw replaced. And I was like, holy fuck, Fur! No teeth, no hair, one ball, and you live in Florida? <laughs> Did God do meth for you? <laughs> Thing. They say crutches are a funny story and a cane is a sad story. And I really think that sums up your life really nicely. <laughs> One sad story. <laughs> You're an accomplished lawyer from a family of lawyers. Your father went to uh, Harvard for lawyermanship. That's what it's that's what it's called. <laughs> Yet you were also in the military. And you are not gay with child evidence. There is multiple instances of you pushing out a baby. So you have had sex canonically at least like three times. <laughs> you don't know how this works, do you? <laughs> but now you wind up performing for furries and streaming video games to like 10 people. 20. <laughs> Could you just not think of another way to piss off your dad? <laughs> I thought of ideas. I never got to rebel, dad. I'm 40 now. I'm gonna do it somehow. 
I messaged Boozy confirming a few of the things that I asked him about. And when he's like, well, technically, uh, I'm not in the military. I was a merchant marine. You know, splitting hair. Because somehow sounding like a store brand version of a mercenary <laughs> is better than what I said. <laughs> That's very lawyer of him, though. I want to see Boozy brokering sex. <laughs> well, you see, QM, I've taken out the trash, and I've put the kids to bed. And you said on the 14th of last month, I, you would do anything to come home to a quiet and clean home. So ladies, well, lady of the jury, I believe this badger is owed a little push smashing time before I stream Life is Strange. <laughs> a question because I'm really concerned about this. Tonight is your 12th wedding anniversary, right? Yeah. That's very good natured of you, but she is here on her 12th wedding anniversary. <laughs> QM once told me her parents kicked her out for being a lesbian. And I thought that was crazy. But then I also thought, what the hell? <laughs> Did you just hard left so concerned for your parents' approval you caught a badger in the headlights? <laughs> a nice white cyst male badger with a law degree and a southern accent? <laughs> you know, no matter how hard you try, you're not going to win your parents' approval back. I still hate him. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Just get out now, QM. Run! I mean, you can really just walk. I think you can out hobble boozy. <laughs> what? Don't give me a soulless look. <laughs> get some eyebrows, bitch. <laughs> hey, Alkali. <laughs> Oh, Alkali. Oh. <laughs> My favorite part about Alkali is his memory. Oh. Right? That's a joke in and of itself. <laughs> I once asked him at a convention, saying, Hey, am I going to be on a comedy better after, I, after I've had a few? And he comes up to me in all sincerity and says, Oh, no, no, I got someone else on. I had you on a different thing. I'm just trying to play fair. You know, I look, I understand. You kill at that panel. It is so funny when you're on... Please, I, I, I appreciate it, but just not this time. And I'm like, yeah, it's fine, whatever. The real thing is, though, I've never been on that fucking panel. <laughs> but apparently I killed, huh, Alkali? <laughs> and now, a small impression. Oh, no. <laughs> hey, everybody, I'm a fat... You should put money in my hat for charity! <laughs> the only difference between me and a homeless person is four walls! <laughs> so kind. It, am I? Yeah, you genuinely are. I was going to be sleeping in my car this weekend. This is no joke. And Dragger was like, you can sleep on my floor. I don't care, dude. He's such a genuinely nice person. <laughs> and like, it, it's just his soul says one love. Too bad his fashion sense says one race. <laughs> kid, Dragor, although you really do look like a fetus that came in second place. <laughs> this dude has
has no body hair anywhere. I know because he sleeps in the nude. So like, I'll wake up in the middle of the night to him going to bed and it looks like a tall fucking gray at the end of my bed in full Sasquatch pose with a pair of trucker nuts hanging down below. Which brings me to the roasted. Xander the Blue. Xander is so white, he was born with a silver spoon covered in mayonnaise in his mouth. As time got on, he went to college, and that spoon sort of morphed into a dick, and the mayonnaise, well, finished the joke. He went to school for art to work on video games, and he worked so hard and got so far to get where he is now, unemployed. <laughs> he's, a com he's a comedian, hanging out, or hanging out in his boyfriend's garage, smoking weed, eating chips, and laughing about how someone drew Bambi's dick all wrong. <laughs> with Xander is a bit like living in a Kevin Smith movie. <laughs> we spend way too much time on needless dialogue. Someone, Xander, is bound to say something pithy and uh, pithy about society and the government after a fat fucking bong rip. <laughs> And everything, and every single thing that movie sets out to do fails completely because some dumb idiot wants to watch wrestling again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I only kid, Xander. You are by far one of the kindest person, people, I've ever met. Persons. <laughs> In fact, you are, so e you are so eager to help people, your heart often skips a beat. Fuck you, that was awesome! Xander looks a bit like a poor Bruce Willis. <laughs> Except your action movie would be a rom-com. <laughs> Starring you and Alkali, dealing with the relationship problems that would come, uh, dealing with relationship problems, it would be called Dick Soft. <laughs> <laughs> In all seriousness, Xander is, re I'm really proud to have met you. Uh, you've changed my life for the better, and you're one of the smartest comedians I know. And I'm a smarter and stronger comedian for have knowing you, so... Thank you. I love you. Oh my gosh. Give it up another time for Chris the Comedy Bunny. Yeah. Oh yeah, give it up for Chris the Cater. That's what's up. That's the real reason I do this. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. You know, I really do want a dom jot table. <laughs> right? <laughs> Miniature golf and bumper billiards. Dragger only has half of one of those. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So we're all here tonight for Xander. Xander has a dream, and that dream is for there to be a KFC inside of a Taco Bell, inside of a Pizza Hut. That way, he can indulge in a nacho crispy gordita crunch stuffed pan pizza. You'll book, you'll book it your way right there. I hear Xander's on bite now. Have you heard about this, seen this? Yeah. yeah. Is joining a Vore service penance for selling your soul as an artist? <laughs> no, no, just ask him, just ask him. Yeah. I did actually see your first bite. Haven't seen such inspired dancing since the Macarena. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> uh. QM. You know, QM buys so many Girl Scout cookies that they ended up 
their family is on a Girl Scouts of America watch list. <laughs> nice job. We invited QM here this evening to balance Xander's fur pile of dick-shaped things with regales of being part of the Parent Teacher Association. <laughs> the Badger household actually has a few rules with acronyms. I'm sure you know them. LGBT, LGBT, that's okay. But don't eat all your dinner and your SOL. <laughs> that's a bit better than the old rule where bad behavior results in an all-expense paid trip to basement con. <laughs> I've learned so much from you, QM. A little bit of decorating, a little bit of housekeeping, and passive-aggressive affection. <laughs> we added QM to this panel to help drag her self-esteem. Now they can both compete for the Napoleon complex. <laughs> QM still reads bedtime stories. Sometimes. Popular titles include... <laughs> clearly, clearly, clearly we have a winner in the previous joke. Okay. It's, it's either, the, either the previous joke was that good or Dragger's just for hiding, hiding from his conscious responsibility. <laughs> But yeah, QM reads bedtime stories. You know, popular, popular titles include, as you might expect, To Kill a Mockingbird. <laughs> Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, you know, Dr. Gonzo. Oedipus Rex. Mm -hmm. And how I don't, I hope you don't turn into your dad. <laughs> you know you're on the bad side of QM when they just put you in your car, into that cart, but they never check out. <laughs> QM, we've not known each other as, as long as I have some of the others on the panel, but I, I have to say, in a short period of time, I feel like you're part of my family, and it's an honor and a privilege to have you up here on the stage tonight. Would you please give a round of applause for quotation marks? The honor. Come on up. I'm going to... Oh, sorry. It's okay. I'm just nearly eight foot shorter than you. <laughs> All right. Well, I'd first like to thank our roast master, Iggy, who my spouse likes to call a discount Charlie Manson. <laughs> but, you know, I think that's an unfair comparison. Charlie Manson had a following. <laughs> play guitar. I have faith you can gain that following. <laughs> but if you're committing, you better hurry up. We're running out of beach, boys. <laughs> I have to thank Yuki for allowing me to do this rest in the first place. I was surprised when I was asked because, you know, according to some people in the fandom, I don't have the right equipment to do comedy. But then they asked Fur to do the last one. <laughs> I guess they were testing things out. <laughs> Sorry, Fur. Honestly, I think he's been through enough. What the fuck, dude? Did you kick a leprechaun as a child? <laughs> Dragger, tell your people to knock it off. He suffered enough. <laughs> Dragger is what it would be like if we had one of the war boys from Mad Max become con chair. <laughs> Pale, bald, constantly sick, edgy wardrobe, and a glutton for punishment. I mean, I had four kids and I'm like, that's enough. 
You gr agreed to babysit a hotel full of grown adults for the weekend. <laughs> Isn't that right, Alkali? <laughs> but Alkali is it kind of into torture. I know, <laughs> He's the first conchair who had to step down to depriapism. <laughs> That's the story from now on. Speaking of Alkali, do you want to know how the Babadook became a gay icon? Yes. A group of terrified twinks saw Alkali walking out of a bathhouse and yelled, Oh my god, he does exist! <laughs> My darling spouse. Oh, yeah. Lord. I'd have showed him these jokes ahead of time, but much like our kids in the event we did vote for us, he'd take the best ones. Oh. Wow. You might not know this, but in addition to our children, we have quite a few pets. We have among them a three-legged dog, and a half-blind cat. Boosie asks, why do we have so many defective animals? Aww. He forgets, I married him. <laughs> Chris the Comedy Bunny. What two cartoon characters fucked to make you? Chris is a who? Down with OPP. Other people's puppets. Oh, yeah. I love you. <laughs> Can't afford their own. We need to set up a GoFundMe to get some of their own puppets before they get banned from Etsy. <laughs> <laughs> and on to the man of the hour. I shouldn't be making a fun of his lack of vision, but I swear, if Xander ever fully opened his eyes, we'd have six more weeks of winter. <laughs> Xander is a huge wrestling fan, which makes sense. He has a lot in common with a few wrestlers, like John Cena. John Cena's catchphrase is, you can't see me. And Xander's catchphrase is, I can't see. <laughs> CM Punk had the cult of personality. Xander has the blood ritual. <laughs> you have Mankind, the wrestler. And then you have Alkali, who looks like Mick Foley really let himself go. <laughs> I always thought I was ridiculously clumsy. And then I met Xander. We were sitting in a hotel lobby, just talking not even moving, and out of nowhere, his phone goes flying across the room. Like it was just tossed out by an unseen hand. You need to teach me that trick. It'll scare the fuck out of my religious relatives. <laughs> but seriously, Xander is a wonderful person and an amazing friend. I love you, dude. Yeah. What? No, no, that's good. Yeah, Give it up again for quotation marks. <laughs> Since Boozy decided to insert their jokes in QM's routine, I'm just going to go straight. Sorry, Xander, this is personal. <laughs> <sighs> Boozy used to be the only lawyer paid in cigarettes. Oh. Now he just gets paid in water vapor. <laughs> you know, out of all of us, I thought you were the straightest. Kind of seemed like one of those straight out of Philadelphia types. And the wisest crack you have is the Liberty Bell. Oh. <laughs> Boozy is on this panel tonight of their own court. His own Twitter calls him a loud asshole. It's a really cute title to put in your business cards. <laughs> we didn't roast Boozy, because if we did, his body hair would create a fire bigger than Australia's. Oh, 
Boozy pops a bono every time QM makes him a tort. <laughs> you gotta keep up that Swanson S figure, you know. At every meal, you need to have bacon, meat, and breakfast. <laughs> Boozy's private bourbon collection consists of a bottle of tears scraped from people he's pissed off on Twitter. <laughs> the Badger household only has one key rule. The beatings will continue until performance improves. <laughs> Please welcome to the stage the warmest lawyer I've ever met. Boozy Barrister, everyone. Cheer up, Braggy. He's a wonderful showman, a wonderful musician, a wonderful comedian. Personally, I would donate to his Patreon, but I'm pretty sure looking at him, he'd just spend it on drugs and alcohol. Can you stand? Stand for us, stand for us. So, uh... When did this motherfucker decide he was gonna leave the episode of Starsky and Husk he was playing the, uh, the pimp on? <laughs> he loves game shows. He's very good at them, except the price is right. They don't tell you the prices of things at the homeless shelter. <laughs> As he mentioned earlier, he used to have a beard, but, um... Pretty sure it moved off to California on its own to kill Sharon Tate. Oh, you like that? Your kind share, ladies and gentlemen, the buffest cancer baby. Drag or's what happened when St. Jude's installed a gym. And looking at you, I can't imagine the pride that fur fills to see his missing testicle all grown up. <laughs> hey dude, what, what's that fucking outfit you've been wearing all weekend? There's a hat. Oh, fine. <laughs> he looks like Tim Burton's rejected Willy Wonka design, doesn't he? <laughs> I keep running to rub his head, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to get a facial if I do. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Hi. <laughs> Chris the Comedy Bun. The only person whose fashion sense can best be described as I squat in a preschool basement. I know that basement. You might get the coat rack. I mean, dude, dude, most of us recognize that even though the Toys R Us jingle said you don't want to grow up, you can't just mug a fucking five-year-old and steal their identity. <laughs> you know he sleeps in a toddler's bed, then the parents check in and throw him out of the house. <laughs> Yesterday, I found out that Chris has gotten a job as a elementary school janitor because that is the face of someone who definitely is not molesting a kindergartner. <laughs> Seriously, Chris, I love you though, like the son I'm never gonna acknowledge. <laughs> Hey, Boozy. 
I wasn't expecting a type 5 on me being a pedophile, but I like a type 5. Hey, Chris, you want to rephrase I like a type 5? <laughs> Thank you for that dunk, dude. All right. I would like to thank you for, for your commentary on my hobbies, considering that I'm talking to the world's worst life insurance investment. <laughs> they say you can't speak ill of the dead, so given your track record, I'm going to be brief on you. <laughs> it is always good to see you, especially here, but primarily because I have Anthrocon in your death pool that we're running backstage. <laughs> Come on, MCFC. Come on. <laughs> Folks, fur beat cancer, which is going to mean it's going to be rather disappointing when he dies in some weird 3D printer accident. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Iggy earlier asked you all if any of us had ever wondered what it would be like to be a bizarro fur. I don't have to wonder because um, I have both of mine. <laughs> Hi, sweetie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're a wonderful wife and mother. You do no wrong and are a beauty and the love of my life. Under what duress did you have to say that? I want to get laid again before I die. On uh, MCFC. <laughs> Alkali! Yeah. <laughs> My dear and lovely friend. What? You are so lucky to have found a wrestling fan. Like, specifically, you are lucky because he probably knows the chokehold. <laughs> oh! Yeah! <laughs> Did you all know Alkali is into breath play? Yeah, that's why after he walks up three stairs, he has to stop and masturbate. <laughs> blessing of your life is finding the love of your life in a wrestling fan because man he's fucking Andre the Giant <laughs> I, uh, you may not know this I have some training as a historian and it's what led me to lead you into this secret that he has kept from us from years folks Alkali Bismuth is a time traveler Sasquatch. they have found pictures of him in all the bathhouses of ancient Rome thing of the hour. Dude, you're the only comedian I know who writes their set list in braille. <laughs> like, you remind me of my grandma. Yeah, you can't see, you drive a Pontiac, and you've got a thing for Bigfoot. I love the fact that he's a porn drawing comedian who sits in somebody else's garage all day smoking weed. I'd call him a stoner, but most stoners I know have held down a job for more than a week. <laughs> and seriously, dude, no offense, but if the guy who's stealing his wardrobe from a children's show can hold one down, what's your fucking issue? <laughs> I get it, though. No, I get it. You're, you're taking a lot of time to work on perfecting yourself as an artist and as a content creator. So how's those giant horse sticks you're drawing working out for you? We're getting there. I, am. I don't, I don't want to make fun of Xander's cited issues. Um, I do want to point out he recently got a seeing eye dog, though. Citrine the Husky. <laughs> Xander, in all honesty, I do want to thank you for being a great influence, not only the furry fandom and not only for everybody on this podium, but for everybody out there, a wonderful creator, a wonderful maker of things, and more supposedly me, a wonderful friend. Thank you so much for all that you do.
Only one more left. Who's gonna go around for a boozy? Yeah. That brings us to Alkali. Look at Xander. I look at Alkali. Look at Xander. Look at Alkali. And then I need a chiropractor. <laughs> Speaking of looking up, if you look up Alkali Bismuth on the periodic table, he's categorized under basic bitch. <laughs> I showed my mom a picture of Alkali in his top hat, and she asked me, you know, so everyone kind of dresses up to your event, right? You know, I said, sure. Um, so why is there a man dressed at your furry event as Ebenezer Scrooge? <laughs> Heard the Dragon Show has a new studio, congratulations. I'm glad to see you effectively moved out of your parents' basement and into the garage. <laughs> Common guest stars, of course, include an unopened stack of paper towels, two stray hammers, they're there every time, and the, the usual hammered guests. <laughs> no alkali, it's not considered quest completion to take your pants off before dinner. It's also not worth bonus points if, if you don't wear pants all day, boozy. <laughs> <laughs> and alkali is, of course, great at D&D, I'm told. Makes a lot of sense because, you know, rogues are best at doing it from behind. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your former chair. Oh, first square, tall, drunk, handsome charity man. Uh, it's my distinct honor to welcome up by Bismuth up to the podium. Like Fur's parents said, prepare to be underwhelmed. I'm gonna make fun of him first because he stole my entire bit. Not the words, just the way they were said. Screw you. <laughs> Fur, I once heard that laughter is the best medicine, and obviously so have you. But have you tried penicillin? <laughs> Iggy, thank you so much for the introduction. Iggy is an amazing person. He's a master gamer. He's a master mathematician. Obviously a masturbator. <laughs> Tell me when you look at him, you don't think of the textbook definition of a masturbator. Dude, it took me four years to call you Iggy. Before that, you were Gandalf the Gay. <laughs> Chris? Yeah? Every time we speak, I am more confused as to how you are alive. <laughs> Every story is more horrific than the next. <laughs> After we finished the Dragon So panel, I was walking behind Chris and Xander down the hallway. Chris said to Xander, hey, do you think my stories are relatable? <laughs> On the other side of the damn hall, I heard some kids say, yep. I constantly cover my buddy's dog in mayonnaise. Way to go, Chris! <laughs> they say live the life you want to lead. Chris is living the life that trail off here because everything else is hate-filled speech. <laughs> Going back to fur for a second, seriously, you're just gonna yell up here? I got nothing left. Energy is the only thing I have. At least you got cancer. You have no idea how hard it is for me to do this. After every single line, I feel bad. Just like I did when I made this man con chair. But you need to understand something. There's a reason that he's con chair. This man over here always had an answer to every question I ever had. It was unbelievable. It was almost like magic. Dragger, for the first four years of our friendship, I thought you were a bleached eight ball. <laughs> I feel so bad. Hey, Boozy. I may be big and fat, but I can get out of my bathtub myself. <laughs> also, I called Iggy a master mathematician, but obviously that role goes to QM. You seem to know something about leverage. <laughs> 
I once heard somebody say that QM is riding on Boozy's coattails and nothing could be farther from the truth. QM, if you were riding on Boozy's coattails, no one would ever see you. <laughs> Uh, did I horribly insult everyone except for Xander? All right, turn that over. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Xander, you are a giant blue dragon. I'm finally living out my childhood dream. I'm dating my acid trip. <laughs> I obviously wasn't going to go up here. This is my mate. This is the person I love. There are intimate details we know about each other, so I was definitely not going to come out here without checking the material that I was writing with him. And he gave me the following notes. Alkali, you do realize I'm not actually Tumbles the Stair Dragon. I did not. That was two weeks ago. Every day we learn something new about each other. <laughs> People make fun of him being blind all the time, but I must say that you are an absolutely brilliant individual. If I were blind, I don't know what I would do with myself, but he has found a way to live. He's basically used the Hansel and Gretel method every day. He just leaves a trail of shit from one room to the other. And if I fall and trip on it, he just puts me in the oven because he knows that's what I want. So <laughs> Way too many of you got where I was going with that. <laughs> I feel bad a lot of people up here are making fun of Xander's weed habit, and I must say that that is my fault. It's not my fault because I was the one who introduced him to weed. It's my fault because I'm not as into bondage as I should be. And the first time I gave him an edible, I should have tied you to the goddamn couch! <laughs> You don't do edibles, allow me to educate you for just a moment. Edibles have an activation time of about 30 minutes. He has an attention span of that sentence. <laughs> so one evening, actually at Bit the Ferret's house, the person who started this convention with me, we made pot brownies. And I gave him his first pot brownie. He wasn't done with it when he told me it's not working. <laughs> I told him, wait for a few minutes. He nodded, waited till I was distracted. That's not hard to do. <laughs> and then smoke bombed out of that room to the kitchen where he had his second pot brownie. <laughs> We brought him back into the living room to watch Simpsons because that's what you do when somebody's getting high for the first time, and I love the Simpsons. So I got distracted! <laughs> well, that's okay, because Bit, he hid the pot brownies. We don't want to just leave those laying around. We are responsible adults. But he's blind. <laughs> we were thinking like sighted people. <laughs> If you're blind, and every day, you lose everything, life is basically just one big scavenger hunt. And he holds a world record because here comes pot brownie number three in 20 minutes. We sat him back down on the couch. And during the time that all of this activated, we set up one of my all-time favorite games. We set up Artemis. Artemis is a spaceship bridge simulator that you can actually play right now in the basement of First Square. Xander was the weapons marshal. He shot four space stations, fell asleep once, and peed a little bit on the keyboard. <laughs> And I wouldn't tell that story because he made an ass out of himself, because that's not the important part. That's not the part about Xander that I want you all to know. The part I want you to know is the moment we were done with that game. When he looked at me, shyly, stood up, held me in his arms, and whispered softly into my ear, Can I have another pot brownie? <laughs> Oh, 
Xander, since the day we met, I knew there was something incredibly unique about you. You have made me a better comedian. You have made me a happier person. And honestly, you have made, you've given me a life that I didn't think I could have. Xander, no one is more important to me than you. You mean the world to me. And I'm so happy that we are roasting you so that somebody else can make fun of you for once. <laughs> My mate, the wonderful Xander the Blue. about wrapping up here. Sorry, AV, I don't know which clock is right, but we'll be done by 10.30. You better. We will. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I heard that, pal. All right. Um, just a couple more jokes. Thank you very much, Alkali. Um, I recently learned Xander was big into wrestling, of course. Um, a bit of a shock, though, as I wasn't aware he was that into TNA. <laughs> and of course they have the XFL on them too, speaking of, you know, wrestling. Xander was so excited to try out for the XFL, but they wouldn't accept him to the practice squad because he wasn't a tight enough end. Oh. Confirmed. Oh. Xander's persona looks like a googly-eyed version of the Velociraptors from Jurassic Park, right? <laughs> Maybe it's kind of like Oscar the Grouch and Aquaman eloped with some trident. <laughs> Woo! I, uh... Xander, it's been an amazing 10 years, give or take. I remember when we first met way back, way before any of us were popular or whatever. Um, saw your first open mic. Um, it's one actually one of the experiences I remember most. You're an absolutely wonderful fur. You're honest both as a friend and a performer. Um, you're one of the easiest people to talk to. It's heartwarming to know that you're the same fur back then that I know now. Aww. I couldn't think of a more appropriate fur to roast. You mean so much to everyone on this dais and as well as in the audience. With that, Xander, would you like to take the microphone? There's too many emotions, man. <laughs> All right, enough sad white guys. How about a sad white guy in person? <laughs> oh, which is apparently also the formula for getting your own roast, but whatever. <laughs> oh, but the, yeah. Okay, you don't need a first suit to be a furry. Everyone knows that. But if you stick around in furry long enough, you do end up in costume. I just look up on the stage. It looks like the League of Mediocre Gentlemen. <laughs> yes! Guys, let's get over our roast master, Iggy. Holy shit. <laughs> Iggy, you are incredible. Uh, you do so much stuff. And you're just so active, and you're just learning to play guitar. I mean, seriously, your attitude, you're such a go-getter. But your look just says, go fund me. <laughs> I was like, oh, shit. Oh, it's, it's Doctor Who let him in. Okay. <laughs> oh, who's your stylist, a crypt keeper? I'm just wondering. <laughs> Honestly, I was gonna like, like congratulate you on shaving your beard and stuff, but I think your beard just quit. <laughs> I don't know, no offense on everything. I know, I mean, I know you like the host, uh, you know, uh, game shows and stuff, but honestly, you look more like the host of a twenty thousand dollar pyramid scheme. <laughs> He's younger than me, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, finally, a, a charismatic drunk in the fandom, yeah! <laughs> uh, so when are we gonna get, like, the videos of you and Pepper, like, you know, going out hunting at breweries together, you know? Hey, Pepper! Oh! <laughs> you wanna do 
it a brewery. <laughs> So, yeah, we got a show. Oh, okay, that makes sense. So, if, uh, yeah, if you don't know, uh, they, they go out, they hunt, and then all the extra liquor, uh, Boozy just stores in the bags under his eyes. <laughs> Hi, Boozy, everyone loves you, but say what you will, everyone will still cheer when the T Rex eats the lawyer in Jurassic Park. <laughs> Boozy Badger does sound like a rejected character from Paw Patrol. <laughs> I gotta see you drilling Chase. Like, when did you boop the body camera? <laughs> That's on brand if you know Boozy. So anyway. Anyway. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, Chris the comedy buddy. Oh. Finally, someone to answer the question, what if Pinkie Pie was an eight mile? Uh, I can't wait for your, uh, I can't wait for your Netflix special, uh, My Little Hood Rat. <laughs> Sam Kinison when he collided with that car was just the mystery mobile. <laughs> yeah! And then he went just to go on adventures. <laughs> oh my god. It's funny, like, oh, by the way, yeah, I had an Iggy dissertation joke, you fuck. <laughs> just in case you want to know our wavelength, uh, uh, Chris and I have a, a uh, con. It's kind of becoming a bit of a ritual now. A bit of a ritual. Uh, we go to a con, we get blasted, and then we riff, and then the next day we get mad at each other because we can't remember who came up with what jokes. <laughs> That's so fucking true, by the way. <laughs> oh, fur, yeah, fur! Oh, fur is so freaking weird, I love him, holy shit. Uh, he's the fandom ship of Theseus. <laughs> That's a fur joke, because only five people got that. You're welcome, philosophy majors. Yeah! <laughs> Honestly, fur, I, I, I make fun of your cancer and stuff, but I just don't have the ball, so... Oh, fuck. Oh, QM. QM. I... QM's wonderful. QM killed it, by the way. Holy crap. I... So good. Uh, Kim, I can't make fun of you. You're too nice. Yeah, you know, it's too nice. They look. They. Look, you make Bill Nye look like Bill Cosby. That's really nice. Uh, I'm just saying. You know, just really crazy. Uh, I can't. I can't make fun of QM because uh, we actually have the same heart medication, and I don't know if I'm gonna have pills after the election. So. <laughs> Comedy's fun when it's true. <laughs> oh, let's see what else I got here. Dragor! Oh, no. Oh, Dragor's nice. Love, love, love you, too. Uh, Flex Luthor, everybody. Come on, yeah. Oh, Dragor's my best friend. He's a wonderful person. You run the Condre and everything. But honestly, buddy... You, you couldn't be more felt full of yourself unless you sat on your own dick. <laughs> oh Not for lack of trying. <laughs> oh, see, you tried it. I knew it. I think I remember you, I think you told me that. Anyway. Which time? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh, where's my notes? Oh. Shit. Yeah, no, seriously. Every time, like, oh, shit. Really, Trevor? You just so, so happen to have the most interesting replay of Mario Kart. We have to watch you again. Okay. Hey, see, that's funny to me. <laughs> oh, I, I love you, Trevor. I, you, I've seen you. <laughs> see? That was like four of us. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Trevor, I've seen you evolve from the bulge. 
into what you are now, which is apparently a hemophiliac space cowboy. <laughs> You look like every extra that got shot in Serenity. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, who did I forget? Oh, fuck. Oh, oh yeah, that guy! Alkali, Jesus Christ. Oh, this is gonna be weird. It is shit is true. Oh, by the way, uh... I wanted to mention something else and I forgot it. Oh, right. oh well, I'll just go to my notes. Oh, yes, you were right, Boozy. I uh, did end up with Gay Henry the Giant. I didn't see where I was going to go. Honestly, I saw myself more of like, ended up with a Han Solo, and then ended up with Chewbacca. <laughs> Delicious crumb, let's get it real. Anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, well, I, I, I mean, I, I do like the beard. It's nice to show the world what uh, Abraham Lincoln would look like if he ever went into Orson Welles face. Uh, the French champagne, vintage dated to four score and seven years ago. <laughs> oh man, I want to remember one thing about this like weed story. Ah, oh, fuck it. Anyway, that's see, this is appropriate. Uh, you gotta, you gotta forget certain jokes and all else. It's not a, it's not a fucking Xander said, right? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this has been wonderful. Uh, there's a lot of freaking emotions, <laughs> and I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. Uh, oh, by the way, Alpha, I love you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I just want to wrap up. Uh, all I've tried to do is be happy and doing the things I like to do, and hopefully you like it too. And it just kind of worked out that way, honestly. And it's just amazing to be on. And uh, I'm just going to end with a quote from one of my favorite, com well, my favorite comedian of all time, uh, George Carlin. Uh, he said, uh, Those who dance are considered insane by those who can't hear the music. <laughs> and I just look around and it's like, fuck yeah. <laughs> uh, Nietzsche, so whatever. <laughs> it's true! I actually put that in my school yearbook. I can't believe I put it next to my picture. In my, right next in my yearbook, that quote to George Carlin. I found that out later. So I'm going to end up with uh, an actual quote from George Carlin he ended from one of his sets. And honestly, it's the message I can't think of a better thing to say. This is, uh, take care of yourself and take care of someone else. Thank you so much, guys. Xander, we love you. That's, that concludes the roast of, Z of Xander the Blue. Thank you for Dragger Alkali. Iggy, I'm Iggy. Chris, Boosie, QM, thank you. Been a wonderful audience, and thank you, Xander. Have a good night. By the way, I remember my joke. Do you want to know what it is? No. No. Yes. Alkali, you expanded. My horizons and my butthole. Thank you so much. That's going on his tombstone. Yes, it is. Silver Gato Man, he bought me a coffee. Silver Gato Man, here is the song for thee. He likes to video all the panels at the cons. You should go and watch them whether they are short or long. Silver Gato Man, you video that's not a jibe. 
all of you go to his YouTube channel and like and subscribe.